Welcome to Vitamin B. My name is Mike and this is Jesse. And let's welcome our guest host, Nate. And on this episode of Vitamin B, we're going to be reviewing Mega Piranha. <laughs> right, me. Oh. Let me tell you what. Mega Piranha. You thought Super Gator was. A, oh my gosh. I told him Super Gator sucked, man. I mean, you know what? Super Gator was cool in its own rights, what do yeah. you think? But Mega Piranha. It tops it off, man. It does. It does. Super For, cheesy. Super cheesy is right. Mega cheesy. Mega That's what cheesy. it was. Well, okay. Pretty much mutant piranhas as big as, bigger than people, jumping up out of the water. <laughs> one bite out of one. Looks like one got you made. And I, right I, I'll tell you what, I was wrestling one of them things. And I was a survivor. I got right past it, right on time. I tell you what, if that thing would have been two inches closer to me, I would have been dead meat. Oh my gosh. I was a lucky one. So what did you think about that show, Jesse? Give us your, uh, your take on it. Well, to actually watch the show, I had to uh, keep thoughts out of my mind so I wouldn't rip my hair out. <laughs> it sucked that much. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't so lucky, as you can see. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check out a clip of Mega Do you hear the bumping? It's a bird! It's a plane! It's a Mega Piranha! I got away. Now check out the book of the week. Here we are at a roundabout books for the book of the week. Ta da! Woo! Frankenstein. Now, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mary Shelley probably wouldn't have anything to do with this book, but Dean Koontz did. Dean Koontz did a lot with the legend of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's now a trilogy. There's actually a fourth book getting ready to come out, though. So it's a four-book trilogy. One of my favorite kinds of trilogies. This one takes it a step further. It moves into modern times. It has the monster actually still alive, and he, he's living in a monastery. He's basically a Buddhist monk. Um, you know, he's learning how to control himself, be peaceful. He's brilliant. He's expanded on his powers a lot. He understands things. He understands life. Um, he finds out, though, that somehow, miraculously, Dr. Frankenstein is still alive, too. And he slowly puts together that he's basically building clones of people that are pretty indestructible and slowly taking over around the New Orleans area, and he decides it's time to stop it and to stop the clones. But it's okay because they're starting to break down themselves, and they go a little crazy. We all go a little crazy sometimes. This book is the, the start of an incredible trilogy. When you start it, you won't be able to stop it. I promise. Frankenstein, Dean Koontz, read it. Dun, 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 dun. This is Dave's Discs. Black Sabbath, the first album. This was the album that started hard rock and heavy metal as we know it today. Ozzy Osbourne, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Bill Ward, one of the heaviest, loudest, finest bands ever. Buckingham Knicks, stop looking at her that way. This is the album that was <laughs> right before these two joined Fleetwood Mac. I said stop, just stop. Steely Dan's greatest hits. Now, Steely Dan is an acquired taste, so if you're going to start with Steely Dan, this is probably the place to start, because they're kind of jazz rock. It's all good, but you kind of got to ease into it. It's got a lot of good stuff on it. I recommend it. I'm Dave, and this has been Dave's Discs. Welcome to the Vitamin B Mailbag. Whoopee! All right, well, I'll tell you what. Here's our first... Uh, 
participant, if you will, all you got to do is go to vitamin B mail at AOL.com. You can write us. You can let us know your thoughts, um, your your desires, your fantasies. Actually, you know what? Why don't you just give us some ideas? Or just say hi. Say hi. That's a good one. Uh, ask us a question. Here's one. Uh, here's a burning question that's been tormenting me for years. Who would win in a fight between Mad Max, the Road Warrior, and Snake Plissken, Escape from New York? Uh, though, if Jesse is like the kids at Friendly's, which is, uh, for all you people that wouldn't know what Friendly's is, is a restaurant that Steve, uh, this, this particular person works at, uh, he's ne probably never seen neither of these movies. Uh, seriously, my 18-year-old nephew, for instance, had never seen Robocop, and probably will never... Be intimate with a woman for a while. Uh, thankfully, I <laughs> put an end to that nonsense. And maybe, well, we won't discuss the intimacy, Uncle Steve. Uh, cheerio, Steve, gonna take all your money the next time we play cards, Gonzalez. Uh, Gonzalez, who? Well, I'll tell you what. Personally, I think that the Mad Max, I, I, I really, I think... He might have the upper hand. This is me personally. Um, Jesse, what do you think? I'm kind of stuck in between. They're pretty equal. One smart and one strong. Right, right. Mad Max is more, I mean, you know, he didn't really have much to work with. Whereas Snake Plissken, I mean, he was from the future at the point in time that, lock, that uh, Escape from New York came out. And he had all this technology. And then, you know, he was really smart in the, uh, what was it, the second one, where he escaped from Los Angeles. Uh, I think he turned out all the lights in the world on a little GPS thing. So, you know, he was pretty smart, but tough, man. I mean, hi, my name's Pluskin. Snake Pluskin. I mean, you know, Crap you just yourself can't. if you hear that. <laughs> yeah, I want, man. He probably comes out of the shadows. But then there's Mad Max, man, and, you know, his family got killed and everything, and he drove that awesome Jensen Interceptor. He's just an angry person. Hence the name. Mad Max. Which, Aww. they're t both pretty tough, so, you know, I hate to say, you know, we're going to play this one for hugs, but we are. Uh, I think they're both going to be winners. That's my personal opinion. Everyone's a winner. Yeah, whether it be Mad Max or Snake Plissken. Thanks, Steve, for sending in your letter to Vitamin B's mailbag. Don't forget, it's vitaminbmail at AOL.com. Send in more. Thank you. And have a great day. Hey, this is Jesse, and this is Pieces of Me. Well, we're playing this game in gym, right? And uh, it's where you have to run. Some people run or you stay. And if you get to the other side, I think you got a point or something. Well, some people stay back and throw balls to hit people to get a point. Well, it turns out everybody had been running back and forth who didn't have a ball to throw at somebody. Well, I think I'm just going to go with the flow. Bad for me. One time, the gym teacher blows a whistle for us to run. I'm the only one running, blazing out there, I get hit with the ball on the ankle, and I flip and fall right over and skid. It was like, and man, it was horrible. All I could do was laugh. Ooh, just one of those things you can't really shake off for a while. Of course, uh, it was pretty bad. Late, later that day, what? <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty bad later that day. I didn't really get mocked for it, but for myself, I think I lost a little bit of my pride that day. Yeah, even my sister was laughing at me. I think she started it too. And that was pieces of me. Mm-hmm.